How are you? Good. How are you doing? How's your day been? Busy, busy. Yep. All right. I think Anton may or may not join us. Uh, let me think. Okay. Uh, let me click record. Yeah, no, record. All right. So, not sure if you guys had a chance to check that video that I sent over. Is it the um, same nine minute one you sent us the other day? No, that's the other one. one. <laughs> it's a new nine minute video? Then, no, I didn't watch it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm producing a, a bunch of videos. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Dan, have you had a chance to check it? I'm watching it in parallel right now. <laughs> Extreme multitasking. Yeah. All right, uh, drop it. I'll I'll just uh, quickly sync uh, you guys on it. So basically, <laughs> um, that discovery of the test geo uh, team being horizontal um, prompted me to kind of extract everything from geo team and go uh, around each team individually and figure out how we can take uh, your notebook and basically add additional uh, kind of like a piece to it, which is basically things from your task, but augmented with some of the data that they've been assembling. So to, to give you an example, for example, for risk factors task, they, um, they're gonna augment some age-related uh, stuff, uh, age-related uh, risks with uh, some uh, population density and uh, age distributions for different countries. So kind of like imagine the risk factors notebook has um, age uh, risk factors section and then there is a section that is basically a map or something that visualizes age distributions for the countries and kind of augments that number. For Christine and transmission task which is the that nine minute video uh, they're gonna have the incubation piece and they're gonna have um, basically some layers of like um, incubation data f extracted from the papers in relation to like South Korea or Italy or US and just basically augmenting their data with the, with the geodata. So it's, it's really about like taking what you guys are working and supplementing it for the purpose of packaging it as you know, a more meaningful submission. Does that make sense in general? Yeah, is it is it more like that the other teams are adding their stuff into like the geo team's visualization or geo is adding metadata geo to geo is adding to to your uh, notebook which is something we're trying to figure out going, you know, team by team right now. Uh, I think I have a pretty good picture of, for other teams. Yours might be trickier because it's like um Actually, let's start from you dumping the, the progress in terms of like quick summary of big like taxonomy of what you guys have so far. Yeah. So for us, the, the sub question that we're addressing is like just kind of uh, what do we know about effectiveness of drugs being developed and tried to treat COVID-19 patients? And so with that, especially it also mentions like less common viral inhibitors um, and like which clinical and bench trials are kind of out there. So the way that we're doing that is trying to just present what are all the like candidates that people are using to repurpose for treating COVID. And even just that kind of extraction and presenting that information is already like a non-trivial and I think a pretty high value task. So that's what our dashboard is doing right now. It allows you to search for a certain drug and that drug, um, when you click on it, returns like kind of a list of references where that drug is using in a treatment capacity um, in conjunction with COVID-19. So then that's kind of a navigable little visualization. You can go to the papers, um, you can put the little filters like the time range you want and all that. But just at the high level, we just are trying to identify which drug you know, candidates are out there for COVID treatment. Nice. Yeah, if I can add as well, it, it, may, it may look to the untrained eye like we haven't done very much in the last week <laughs> since the dashboard showed up, but we've been working hard on making sure the data is high quality and everything's packaged properly for Kaggle and you know the, the the search terms are clean and complete and everything so it looks the same but there are no formaldehydes and stuff like that right that, that kind of thing we're yeah. taking them out yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that's great that makes a hundred percent sense um, let me ask you because it's not that obvious if we can augment the the geo stuff 
um, with with your work or augment your work with GeoStaff. Um, do you have the indication of the clinical trial papers and where they're coming from? We will um, have the set of clinical trial papers that we've kind of crudely identified um, in probably the next 24 hours. We're running it now. Um, we've, nice. got a, we've got a very early version of that implemented, but the sort of better version is going to run overnight tonight. We don't have geographic information associated with them. Do you think that's useful? To present this part because we, we want to with our submission i sort of have a feeling <coughs> that we want to present like information where somebody looks at it and they're like oh yeah this is amazing this is what i needed to see you know this is the information like compact and i can find what i want yeah. and i i've been fighting against to some extent like overloading our dashboards i guess yeah. with like lots of other like correlated information and i actually um, don't think you should expand on your uh you know <laughs> dashboard the power bi or whatever but I think mm -hmm. we can create an extra section just to, because even knowing where the clinical trial data is coming from is useful. Like right now you, you have no clue. And if you can get that um, tomorrow, if we can um, basically take that and combine it with, uh, uh, with some of the uh, data, geospatial data that is coming from a geo team, for example, number of cases, a number of tests and you know just a bunch of other stuff that epidemiologists may look at and be like uh-huh you know this is where i have to dig this is whom i should contact and this, these are the the core people working on this specific aspect of the pandemic Does so then that that information will be visualized like here are the kind of like a map or something places. Just any RCT that's mentioned in the database or anything with like... In connection to drugs. Yeah. Because that's so a piece. You would maybe like click a, click a drug name and it would show you like all the places in the world where there had been clinical trials or something like that. Is that the idea? But it sounds like we should decouple this from the I would visualization. Decouple. Yeah. Okay. Because I don't want to introduce all this complexity into mm -hmm. like the Power BI right now, but exactly, well, it would have to be a different visualization, I think, right? It wouldn't yeah. go into the Power BI like itself. Here's in my mind how I see it: you guys uh, present that CSV file with uh, you know clinical trial uh, data and drugs, and Geo Team presents their uh, data on the on the um, basically all the things that are happening that they've integrated time series data and then data visualization team comes in takes those two and produces some simple like map or, or something do they have time to do that within the next four days though uh, that's a good question because <laughs> we still a good have question yeah because we still have a few things that we need to just polish up with them and so we're like working out what the timeline is just for the vt stuff but then to add a whole new visualization kind of component with that yeah. integration might be tough. If that's the concern and you guys see it from the, you know, on the ground and in the trenches, uh, let me find someone who can execute just on this aspect of things. Yeah, because may maybe there are more, maybe like, yeah. There's other definitely more. Visualization people. experts yeah. who are. Who we just lack structure to, to present to someone. Because remember when you asked me for a bird person? And <laughs> like there was just like a lot of people sitting out there waiting to help. Yeah. So there might be the same thing with data viz. We just need a very specific ask for that. Okay. So let me try to understand super clearly what the want is. The want is uh, like a flat CSV with drug being considered in an RCT also with where that RCT, RCT. is happening. Oh, a uh, randomized control trial. Yeah. Sorry. And where um, it's happening. Yeah. And then where it's happening. So is that metadata about where it's happening, like immediately obvious from the papers or is that like, that's what, they, that's what they provide, I guess. Right. Like we give them the paper ID and then they're like, Oh, we've already matched and found that that paper ID was done in Japan or something. Right. right? Okay. So uh, we don't have to do that. We just need to yeah, tell them I, these ones are, are I CPUs. assume that's done, but uh, I think that makes sense. And if it, if it's not done, like, I think it should be done. So yeah, from your side of things, yes, just the drugs, clinical trials, and like I guess like count and links to to those or, or something. Yeah, I'll mm -hmm. let you figure out the the best format. Okay. Yeah, that's quite straightforward for us to provide. I think. So I think so. We will have we can have a very crude version of like which are the RCTs. Um, 
that we can have very quickly, yeah. Perfect. And are, is that task related to what Michael Ayers working on? I actually just synced up with Michael right now and he was, yeah, he's been uh, thinking about that. He's um, like a lone wolf that is working on that and it feels like he should be integrated somehow. Right. So I'm gonna, I, I caught him up to speed with what um, Christine and I have been doing with like getting the annotators on board and like other efforts that are happening in the other teams about this annotation task. So we're on the same page, but uh, he doesn't have like much more work on that front than we do. Okay. Makes yeah. sense. Well, but again, we can do like a, a crude like keyword search version of, of that. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess then, then it makes sense. It, it sounds like we're on the same page in terms of the final submission. I assume you guys are already like have the notebook that you then crafted and you're just basically fine tuning the, the results, right? Yep. Just incorporating the last features, polishing, uh, cleaning up. So, um, you, you go ahead. Oh, so Dan, can you elaborate more what like computationally do, do you guys still need to do? Because you mentioned like four days essentially need to do some. So what's, what exactly are you guys? Right. So um, one little piece of the pipeline is we're trying to extract <laughs> sentences where, uh, there's a drug and like a treatment kind of context mentioned within the sentence. We're mm -hmm. trying to, we did this first simply with just like a simple co-occurrence is the drug and the treatment word mm -hmm. happened in the same sentence. There's going to be some errors in that. So we're trying also using like a BERT model to filter out some of the false positive sentences there, which is the work that Isaac is doing. And I connected you. Guys. Oh, okay. You got it. So tonight, like in a couple of hours, we're supposed to start using GCP, like some fat instance to do that. So hopefully it will all work and We'll get the yeah. results. Okay, I kind of yeah. get the grade. It's um, it's not critical. It's just going to be that we're going to have like a less accurate um, final product. But that's like okay. We'll just kind of list that and describe the protocol that we used. So mm -hmm. this this feature won't like sync us by any means. It just would be a nice to have. And I think that we probably can get it given the timeline, but um, it'll be close. We're also kind of every day improving the quality of our search terms list. So we rerun this selection every day at the moment. Um, mm. So the, the search terms list, which we think is probably quite high quality for finding clinic trials is only ready as of today. So um, we'll run that tonight. Quick question on that. Uh, do you think you need more <laughs> input from people like Randall, the, the MD that sent you some list? So it doesn't make any sense to me, but um, we already have a few people who are thinking about like, okay, there's a lot of issues with uh, people might talk about a drug this way and this way and we have to reconcile that. Mm -hmm. I think there's like enough cooks that we understand the complexity of the problem and I don't think that people, uh, we don't need a ton more help in that regard. But uh, the feedback that Randall gives is very appreciated and we like, I'm keeping tabs on it and, and thinking about, you know, he has very good points to make as well. But I think we're all, there's enough experts within the team right now, I think. All right. Thank you. Sounds good. Well, then sounds great. Let's let's keep up the good work and hopefully we, we converge to this uh, you know, geo augmentation and, and it makes sense. Cool. So so the to do there would be like get Daniel a list of, of those clinical trials and then join that and then together we'll present to data viz and or, and talk with you about recruiting for data viz yeah. and try to make some kind of visualization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, if, if that will somehow create any roadblocks for you internally, just drop them. But like, yeah, it sounds like it should be an easy pull. So yeah, I think it's very possible. So cool. yeah, we'll do our best. All right. Sounds That's good great. guys. Cool. All, All right. right. Talk to you later. Well, Thanks before for we, actually, before, we, before we cut off, can I ask you one other thing? Atta? You said something about the final format of the Kaggle submissions, like, and I saw something about like <laughs> flat CSVs or something, and that's like clearly not the like format we were planning on our final product being. And I with. think that was because Anthony Kaggle CEO has an idea that you know risk factors might be the like, because risk factors kind of has a unique CSV structure, just list of you know risk factors and top papers associated with it. I think we can try to come up with a similar one for, uh, you know, uh, vaccines and therapeutics. I don't think we should focus on that right now. Okay, good. Because I mean, I think that the thing that we we consider that we're sort of producing that is is a high quality contribution is the navigability of the data set, yeah. right? In terms of yeah. clicking on things. 
um, and our CS, flat CSV would probably not be very interesting. <laughs> yeah, especially like if you think about people like Randall, right? Uh, they, they have no clue what that CSV file or table means, but if they can click through the list of drugs, I think that's, that's a very powerful thing to, to explore for him. Okay. All right. But Kaggle is not expecting us to deliver like a flat CSV, is it? No. Okay, good. Cool. All right. Good. All right. Sounds Thanks. good, guys. Bye. Thanks for checking in.